Hey everybody, it's uh, Batjack JW, and yeah, I figured we'd bring this back out. It's a slow morning. <laughs> I got a little bit of noise going on outside, but uh, we'll we'll try to chit chat here about this and everything. So we're gonna slow the roll a little bit and just kind of talk about this uh, beautiful specimen. Yeah, I figured uh, it's been a while since uh, we brought it out. And it's a Cimarron. Yeah, so uh, it's made by uh, Uberti or um, this one here is a Uberti, uh, some more Pieta and, and whatnot. Um, you know, so you get the four and three quarter, it's a 3840 in caliber. And I'm pretty sure we already know what we're talking about. You got all the literature and everything. Um, as usual, they're really cool uh, bumper sticker and all that, but there's the gun, the revolver, single action revolver, no doubt. Really cool stuff. Um, I uh, I was always uh, I had many of the 45 Colt uh, caliber, and you know something uh, got me on this one. And uh, you know what? We're gonna talk about that. Get some coffee going. Um, 3840. Interesting cartridge. Very interesting. Uh, never messed around with one, so we'll we'll get into that. But uh, this thing has been a fine, fine uh, shooter. Uh, it, uh, because of the caliber, uh, as a hand loader, that was uh, really important. We get into hand loading, and uh, if you're going to get into this, you're definitely going to want to be hand loading, uh, without a doubt. Uh, so uh, you're going to need to set up a machine and all that, um, because buying the rounds in itself is quite expensive. But uh, you can still get them. I think Black Hills and whatnot makes them. So what we have here, I changed a few things on mine. As you can probably see, the uh, the John Wayne style uh, yellow grips. These are the original grips it came with right here. Uh, those are the original ones. They even have the uh, little uh, Cimarron um, pony. Nothing wrong with them. Uh, I just, um, I think they're even, are they serial numbered? Yeah, they sure are. I never noticed that. Actually, I just noticed that uh, right now. But um, I changed out the grips. And uh, also, I changed out, uh, as I found out, when uh, Cimarron, or, uh, you know, not, well, I keep saying Cimarron, they're just the importing company. But uh, Uberti, and this one is a Uberti. Let's see, where does it, uh, I forget where it says it, right there, yep. Uh, Uberti, Italy. As I found out, they changed some things. And one of those things they changed is the uh, safety system. And what they did was they added this strange um, little uh, gizmo thing. The, the trigger itself has like a little shoe on it. And then it uh, on the trigger pull, it, that shoe pushes up on a uh, system inside the hammer, which is strange, goes up behind the firing pin and then pushes it forward uh, for, so it can strike the round. So traditionally, and the way I always, um, when I mess with these, even when I had one that was uh, with the, I used to have one, uh, it was a, uh, a Beretta made one and it was called a Stampede. It was one of the first ones I ever bought. I since then let it go. Um, but it has a transfer bar system. Even then, I only loaded five. I always kept that hammer on an empty cylinder. I uh, just, you know, old habits or just the way, you know, it just kind of always was um, taught and the way I messed with these things. I always did that. But these ones here, the, the older ones, especially uh, before they did this system, you certainly wanted to do that. Of course, they had some other safety things where you could push the, uh, the, the retaining uh, rod here, the cylinder rod or whatever. Um, you could push that in all the way to the, to the first notch, I believe it was. They had two notches on them, and that would bump the hammer out away from it just a little bit so you could successfully do that. That was one way they did a safety. Um, so. But the old school way, you load five, you know, load one, skip one, and then you rest that hammer down on an empty uh, uh, chamber. So 
Um, but I, uh, I took that whole system out because what I found with it was it kept fouling up. Uh, there was times where it, it just wouldn't successfully fire the, the round. It, it just, uh, it hung up. It's a very faulty system. I didn't like it. And so I removed it. This is what it looks like. Uh, that's the little pin that holds it together and everything. And, um, this uh, little wedge in the back here, we'll just go ahead and take it out since we're just hanging out today. This little, uh, gizmo here pushes up behind that firing pin and then, uh, allows it to fire. Well, I just did away with all that. And then, uh, I made up some, uh, copper shims and put it behind the firing pin itself. So the firing pin is now, uh, correctly forward, uh, in the correct distance and everything. So I, I chose to make it out of a softer metal because I didn't want that metal on metal contact. I put, I figure I put a little buffer in there. Um, you know, it's easy enough for me to replace those little copper shims I made. Now, the other thing I did, I did replace the, um, the spring in it with a, uh, I think it's a, a wolf, a wolf product or something, but makes for, uh, cocking it a little bit easier and I'm not trying to make a, a slicked up, you know, single action or anything like that. So, um, the grips here, you know, I made these grips myself. Uh, you guys, if you've been around the, the channel a lot, some of you are new to the channel. Uh, I started making my own uh, John Wayne yellow grips when the, uh, when a little incident happened where I used to have the, uh, uh, rooster shooter and, it had uh, the original like uh, type grips like this, and that's what these are actually modeled after when I, I'd made these a while ago. And I made them uh, model after the original grips that were on the uh, Rooster Shooter pistol uh, back when they first did the first run of those. Uh, now they're kind of, I, I gotta say, I'm not impressed with the new grips, but um, the ones that uh, I did see in the early days, uh, especially the ones that were on mine, they were made by Bar S, and they did a good job. Um, so, and then I got a little book here that's fun. A friend of mine uh, saw this book and got it for me. And one of the cool things about this book, uh, it's this uh, intimate look at the legend. I, I know you can't see that, but in it, it has a wonderful photo of his revolver right there. And of course, his uh, holster and uh, belt rig and everything. I didn't bring all that out to the table. There's no need to. We got plenty of videos of it. Um, but uh, there it is. And yeah, you know, I put the finger grooves on it. And uh, I don't know if you can tell it in the video or not, but um, I always like to alter my things and make it a little bit different. Now, this ones, I, these ones I made with. I just went with the plain the plain mellow yellow look. Um, I didn't want to add any kind of aging to it. I just wanted to kind of just the plain look, but um, this side of the grip is a little bit of a shade different in color than this side. I did that on purpose because the, again, I was trying to replicate the ones that broke on me. And uh, so that's what the original on those, the color was like that. I don't know why, but one, one side was a little bit more like darker and the other side was a little bit more, um, you know, kind of a subdued yellow, but in it, without a doubt, you can still always tell they're yellow grips and that's what's really neat about it. And of course it's all with the Duke and, uh, you know, big fan of those movies growing up. So, uh, I had to add that on there, <laughs> but the, uh, cartridge in itself is uh, strange because the 3840 as I've been always, always like, I just love that 45 Colt. Um, that's where it started with me and everything. But something about the 3840 got me. This is, if you've never shot one, they're so accurate. They're unbelievable. The accuracy is crazy. Um, a lot more accurate than I could ever be. But even for me being a terrible shot, it's, uh, yeah, it can actually shoot pretty well with them. So you can see it's a kind of a, it's a bottleneck cartridge and the casing, this is a brand new one from Starline. So you can see just how significant that shoulder is on that casing. Now I've uh, loaded up all kinds of different ones here that I've done up. Um, I've loaded the, and it's a basically a, a 401 uh, diameter uh, bullet. Uh, basically 40 caliber. Uh, 
I got these here are the uh, polymer coated ones from um, the Regan Enterprises, uh, otherwise known as Badman Bullets. Check them out. You order a thousand, they ship for free. Um, I believe he's still doing that, but uh, I know with everything, everything's so backed up. But um, he's been a great supporter of the channel, so check them out, and they're very accurate. I've got a lot of video footage of his rounds or his um, his projectiles, bullets, bullets. Um, doing a really good job in accuracy department uh, splitting playing cards and all that kind of fun jazz um also you know just the standard lead and everything and you can see the uh the, the round is really interesting looking i always found it very very cool i love the that way it bottlenecks um the secret to loading these if you're gonna load them is your crimp die uh, the crimp die, the, a good set of dies. Now I'm running kind of a, a hodgepodge a mix of, of dies. My, although my crimp die, I, I wound up just uh, really just pulling the trigger on it <laughs> um, and getting a uh, redding crimp die. And those are not cheap. Uh, those of you loaders, hand loaders out there, you know when you hear that name, those are not cheap. Um, the uh, the Lee sizing die I seem to be getting away with just fine. I've no uh, issues of them uh, chambering or whatnot. You know, so they they do uh, they do uh, chamber a little bit better. Um, mine my particular one when I first got it, the chambers were a little tight. I uh, was very fortunate that uh, the the place where I picked it up, the old little mom and pop shop where I picked it up. Uh, because I bought it through them and I didn't go online trying to save $25 and get it transferred over, um, they helped me out with that. And that, I'm really thankful for that because the, uh, the, the old man there that runs his place, um, he and his wife, really nice people, he went ahead and uh, reamed the chambers for me just a little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit, opened them up just because the diameters were a bit tight. So uh, he went ahead and did that for me, and the gun's been working fantastic ever since. But you know, I mean, that's what you get. I mean, I, I bought it through them, so, and they were willing to help me out, and that's, uh, that's good, good service there. So also, uh, this, this, uh, if you're gonna mess around with this, it's gonna be powder dependent. Uh, you really gotta follow the book. I have found that tight group really worked the best because other powders um, follow it up and you get a little bit of issues. So uh, tight group I found is, is the best and it's partly probably because it's a little bit finer of a powder and it burns up really quickly. So, but uh, anyway, yeah, I figured we just uh, kind of chat around here. Some people may uh, like the video, not like the video, <laughs> that's okay. Um, we do have a full video of this, just uh, the meat and potatoes kind of video on this particular one, but I figured we'd bring it back out just for giggles. And you know, if you're like me and grew up watching uh, El Dorado, Real Bravo, you know, uh, Real Lobo, all those way too many times, a lot of those old classic uh, stuff, you know, this is just going to be kind of something you're going to want. <laughs> Thanks for watching.